You've seen how SwiftUI lets us make implicit animations by attaching an animation modifier to a view, and also how we can animate binding changes by attaching animation to a data binding. But there's a third way we can create animations. We can explicitly ask SwiftUI to animate changes as a result of any change we like, whenever we want. This still does not mean we've got to try and make each frame of the animation by hand. That remains SwiftUI's job. It still figures out what needs to change and how based on the state of our views before and after the change we made. Now though, we're being explicit. We want an animation to occur here when it's an arbitrary thing has happened, not attached to a binding, not attached to a view. It's just us explicitly asking for a particular animation to occur because of a change happened. To demonstrate this, here's a simple piece of code here. It creates an empty tap me button with some padding red background, white foreground, and a, a clip shape of a circle. When that's tapped, we're going to put some code in here that will make it spin around with a 3D effect. And this requires another new modifier, rotation 3D effect, which will be given a rotation amount in degrees, as well as an axis that determines how the view rotates. Now, try and think of an axis like a skewer through your view. Otherwise, I find it very confusing. If you skewer the view, through the X axis like this, the view can rotate forwards and backwards. If we skew it through the Y axis like this, it can rotate left and right like this. And then if we go through the depth axis, Z or Z, it'll be able to rotate left and right. So imagine it as skewers like that. Now making this work requires first some state we can modify. So I'll say there is an at state, private var animation amount equals 0.0, .0 because rotation degrees are specified as a double. Next, we're going to ask this button here to rotate itself by animation amount alongside the Y axis. So it'll spin left and right like this. So I had a modifier after clip shape saying rotation 3D effect. And we're going to provide this with the amount to rotate as an angle, so we'll say dot degrees of animation amount. And the axis is a tuple with x, y, and z. So I'll say x is 0, no x, y is 1, full x axis, and z is 0. Now for the important part. We want to add some code to the buttons action up here. So it adds 360 to animation amount whenever the button is pressed. Now, if we just write in here animation am uh, amount, come on, Hudson, amount plus equals 360, the change will happen immediately, right? There's no animation modifier attached to our uh, button area. And so there's no implicit animation happening. This is where explicit animations come in useful because we can call the with animation function and then SwiftUI will ensure any changes put inside that function will be automatically animated. And so we can say with animation, animation amount plus equals 360. Run the code in your Mac. I encourage you to try it out because I think you'll be impressed by how good it looks. If I run this back now, we should see all being well. Boom, it'll just spin around beautifully whenever it's pressed again, 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 all in a sort of 3D effect. It was so easy to write. Animate this change, please. Bang. Now, if you have time, experiment with the axes a little bit. Try x 0.5, z 1, so you can really understand how the skewering thing works. Otherwise, it's quite confusing. And if you're curious, you can, in fact, have more than one axis at once on a skewer across y and x at the same time, for example. Now, this with animation function here can be given an animation parameter using all the same animations you'd use elsewhere in SwiftUI. For example, we could make our rotation effect use a spring animation, like this. We'll say with animation, dot interpolating spring, stiffness five, damping one. But still inside there, add 360 to an animation amount. And now what will happen is we get a spring effect for our button when it's pressed. There we go. So it'll bounce backwards and forwards, a lovely 3D effect with hardly any code. 